All right, welcome everybody out. Um, tonight's topic is essential oil topic is uh, coriander. And I'd just like to introduce um, Jade Baldwin. She's actually going to be teaching us about coriander. And um, it's going to be um, really insightful. Um, I don't know if uh, you've attended these before, and you know, you, you'll find that you have a lot more information. Um, there's a lot of uh, wealth of knowledge that you um, can't really find any, anywhere else. And so Jay, just pulling on her um, individual experience, she's been uh, sharing essential oils for um, six or seven years. And it's been amazing as she's got traveled around the world and taught people and she has a lot of stories to tell. And so without further ado, I'll turn the time over to Jay. Okay, hi everyone. Hi Jay. Hi. Welcome back. Well, Hi. I'm still in Australia. <laughs> oh, oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not in the other room in the same house. I'm in Australia. <laughs> so wow. I'm across the road. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> so guys, do you have your coriander? Do you have your coriander out? Uh -oh. That's the one I don't have. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you have it, take it out and smell it and let me know how you feel okay let me know what you think of it that's the first thing you want to do it has a sweet smell to it but it also has a smell like um like fennel a little bit oh really yeah mm. okay. <laughs> it's very different to cilantro isn't it Yes. Yeah. How about you, Kayla? Are you are you there? Okay. I am here. Hang on. <laughs> All right. I'm I'm finishing my dinner. I just got home. Um, <laughs> I just texted Ron and said, "Do we have coriander? Will you bring it here?" <laughs> <laughs> so I am no help. <laughs> He's in the house somewhere. <laughs> Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> How about Melanie? What about you, Sue? What do you think? Like it? I do like it. It smells very fresh and clean. Mm -hmm. Good. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> I do not have coriander yet. Okay. That's all right. Well, we can't tell you how it smells for you, though. <laughs> 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 That's okay. So to me, um, coriander smells a little bit like, um, you know, a little bit of eucalyptus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A, fresh, a limey, sort of limey. Yeah, in between eucalyptus and lime. I do have some. Yay. <laughs> but it's in a dusty bottle, so you can tell how often I open it. <laughs> yeah. But I really like it. Yeah. Awesome. So good, good responses so far. So fantastic, guys. This is one of the oils that have been, I think, underutilized. And I have, have had the privilege of spending a lot of time with coriander the last two weeks. Usually it takes me maybe a day to write about an oil, but it's taken me two weeks to write about coriander because I felt like I didn't have uh, as much um, relationship with coriander as I did, so I used it and tried to use it in different ways and helped others with it. And I feel like we're really good friends now. <laughs> so I'm really excited to share with you a little bit of information about coriander. So Ben, you can go ahead and um, I guess yep. share, share some of this handout. Or, the yep, just yep. the handout or this, the, do you want the screen or just the handout? Um, yeah, the screen is fine too. Let's do the screen then. Okay. Yep. So what we're looking at everybody, this is a Jade, Jade's website. It's jadebalden.com slash coriander. Yeah. So, um, coriander, the Egyptians call it the herb of happiness. <laughs> it's really interesting. And I just, I so appreciate it now. Okay. It was found in King Tutankhamun's tomb and Ramesses too. Um, in his tomb. Interesting. It's one of those oils that they chose to bury with the mummies, I guess the pharaohs. 
that must be very important. And the Chinese people have used this for a long time as well. Okay, and some of them believe that it bestows immortality. <laughs> for me, I just think it's just happy. It just really helps you continue on being happy. And I think it, that happiness is very contagious. Um, so we know that um, your coriander and cilantro as the herbs, sometimes people use it interchangeably, the word. But in the world of essential oils, you know, coriander and cilantro is very different. All right. We're not going to interchange it. It does completely different things. It does similar things in some ways, but it's very different. So if you scroll uh, down a little bit, Ben, you can see the comparative chemical composition. Oh, there you go. Thank you. So we have cilantro oil from doTERRA. And cilantro oil is from the leafy, flowery veg, um, I guess, herb. And coriander is from the seed. Okay, so when people ask you what the differences are, you say it's the same plant, but coriander oil is from the seed. And cilantro oil is from the, I guess, the leaves. Okay. Can you see all the chemicals there that we've got? Decanol above, and then down here we have linalool. And actually, um, coriander has 70 to 90 percent linalool, so it's predominantly linalool. Isn't that interesting? And you know, it looks very, very different. The main ingredients in both of these oils are very different, okay? And linalool is. Um, the properties of linalool is that it's antioxidant. It's amazing antioxidant, trust me. Okay. <laughs> Anti-inflammatory, antifungal, it's sedative, it's anti-epileptic and anticonvulsive. It's just very powerful as in it's a great cleanser um, because of its very high antioxidant ability. So if you have things that are floating around in your bloodstream that is not meant to be there, it does a fantastic job at cleaning. Okay? It's so funny how um, every oil is different, but it is cleaning in a different way. So it's sort of like a different cleaning guy, I guess, that goes into your body, does amazing things. All right, so I broke um, this class up to three sections the body, the mind, and the spirit to help us understand how to use the coriander oil in those three different ways. So if we just look at the um, oil for the body, it's remember it's great for the circulation and releasing toxins. Okay? It helps with any sort of inflammatory concerns. Um, and inflammation means pain for us. Okay, so we have inflammation in the muscles, the bones, the digestive tract, and the lymphatic system. And this here assists us in that area too. Okay, so it clears that junk and debris and so that your cells can communicate more optimally. All right, any questions or comments so far? No? Okay, so, you know, some people might think, well, you, there's, these other oils do similar things. Yes, it does. But sometimes um, it depends on our health problems. If we try a different oil, say we try um, another oil and it doesn't do the job that it wants us to do, it to do, um, then we can try coriander, okay? Because sometimes it, it does similar things, but just this guy is exactly what we need. Alrighty, so let's look at what it can do for our bodies. Um, so one thing I found that it helps with menstrual cramps. Okay, so, you know, anything that's um, spasmodic in our body, it helps calm it and um, soothe it. Okay, so that's great um, if you just rub it on the lower abs. What's another oil that we use for menstrual cramps, guys? Clericone? Yep, that's right. Ben knows all about that. <laughs> my menstrual cramps all the time. <laughs> Yeah, so that's right. And sometimes, if you know, you don't feel like the 
for um, flurry calm, if you don't have it, you can use um, the coriander. Okay, so coriander has made its place in one of my um, keychain oils. Okay, so it's moved up rank. <laughs> so I put that there. It's really good. Okay, and guess what? It's a natural deodorant. So if we rub coriander, you know, if we can just dilute it a little bit under the armpits, it'll help with excessive sweating. And there's some people that have a lot of um, sweating concerns. <laughs> I know my sister complains about that too. And I told her, and she's like, and hey, my husband. And I thought, you guys, you know, if you were superheroes, you'd be super sweat. <laughs> so they're so funny. But this is one thing that helps, you know, clear away the toxins. I think what your body's trying to do is eliminate through the sweat. And here it helps you eliminate more effectively so you don't have to sweat profusely all the time. And it's just interesting. Okay, so try that. Um, okay, so I have menstrual cramps twice. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> it is really important. Okay, so we'll delete that. Alrighty, nausea. And there's another oil that we use for nausea. Um, do you guys know which one? Just a few. Do you guys have experience with another oil for nausea? Digestin or peppermint. Yeah, that's right. Or ginger. Okay. Um, and sometimes people have come to me complaining that, you know, the ginger makes them more nauseous <laughs> or the digestin makes them more nauseous. So here's an alternative. Okay. If they don't like those other smells, you don't have to make yourself uncomfortable. You find another alternative. So... Think of coriander when you think of nausea too. Because sometimes when people have morning sickness um, during pregnancy, peppermint does a job, just smelling it. But sometimes for that person, it doesn't work. And, um, you know, we can try coriander. Okay. <coughs> Alrighty. So the other thing is, um, oh, did you just change it? The other thing is it's um, a fearless personal blend. When we are fearful, our physical body actually goes into like this fight or flight mode and um, we get very stressed. Um, so here is an oil that just chillaxes you and calms you. We have so many different blends. And you might want to just try this and see if it um, is good for you, if your body likes this one. So it's um, coriander, ginger, wild orange, and sandalwood. Okay. And you can use it as an, a fragrance or, um, you know, in a, just leave it in a roller bottle and label it and just use it as needed. Okie dokie. Any questions, comments so far? Okay. So. And do you have an example of that fearless personal blend? Um, some we different forms of anxiety, um, and some of anxiety is because we don't honor ourselves. We know that when we get into that situation, we're going to. Um, we're not going to honor ourselves. We're going to do what other people want us to do. So it's sort of a self-betrayal kind of anxiety. And that's why we have a different version of this calming um, blend. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So this here, um, it also helps with dizziness. Um, so what you can do is you're smelling it. That's what I was saying earlier. It just smells like eucalyptus to me, kind of like an, an oil just to open the airways. Uh, it allows more oxygen into your lungs. Uh, well, that's another oil that uh, we don't think about sometimes. Usually I think of peppermint all the time. But, uh, yeah, now this is another option. Okay, so that's coriander for dizziness. The next thing here on the list is 
is the insulin support blend. And oh my goodness, this has been so powerful. And this convention in Australia that I was at just uh, last week, Dr. Hill added one more oil to this blend. He's, he's given this blend um, years and years ago. It's been very effective, coriander, grapefruit, and cinnamon. But he added juniper berry to this, and I think this is very, very inspired because it makes so much sense. So coriander, okay, it's a fantastic cleanser. Um, grapefruit and cinnamon. The cinnamon helps with insulin. Um, coriander it clears away so that our excess insulin is flushed out. Okay, the grapefruit helps with cleansing inside our bodies, and juniper berry allows your, your kidneys and your liver to function properly so that it starts eliminating and metabolizing um, the sugars properly so that uh, you know, it doesn't, um, I guess, put a lot of pressure on one organ. Okay? So people that have a lot of insulin concerns, sometimes when you look at their blood, they have undigested sugar um, in the serum, okay? and it's, it can cause a lot of havoc. Okay, that's what we need, some oil that is very high in antioxidants to help clean up. So antioxidants, in my head, I think antioxidants is a great cleaner, so a guy that comes in and cleans up really quickly, okay, and effectively. So that's that for the physical body, but it's very, it's all linked. So when we have a health, a physical health problem, we should always um, take whatever the symptom is as a clue of where to start in the mind, okay? In the mind and in the, in the body, in the spirit. So coriander supports the gut and helps with mental clarity. That's what I, um, I mentioned earlier. It helps improve mental function because when your gut is, um, the gut has, uh, is happy, then the gut chemicals or the gut brain chemicals, the neurotransmitters in our gut is going to function optimally. Okay, so a lot of people complain about brain fog, okay, um, and sometimes we don't know what to do. You think, oh, I just smell peppermint, just, you know, make myself alert. So, but the best thing is to go in there and take care of the gut. Okay, and funny enough, that's the next <laughs> class we're having. All right, um, so think coriander clarifying. Clarifying, okay, so that should give you a clue of what you need to, to do. So it helps you think clearly so that you don't um, betray yourself. So emotionally, coriander is the oil of integrity. And the integrity is not, um, it's not that you're not, you're, you know, we lie or anything. Integrity is about um, yourself, okay? It's about being true to yourself. So self-betrayal is when we conform to expectations of others and not our own. Okay, we have an ability to choose. Unfortunately, some of us forget that we have that power to choose. When we give that power away, we feel depressed and uncomfortable and life becomes drudgery. Okay, and life no longer becomes fun. Okay, no, life is not fun anymore for us. So when you pay attention to the way you feel, you, you probably will be able to pick up that you're not able to choose because you, you didn't allow yourself to choose, that's all. Okay, so coriander, um, even if you just rub it on your tummy and just smelling it, you know, will help you feel more connected to your body. Sometimes um, when people have, uh, you know, things that they, they are blocking them and they don't know why and they think, what's wrong with me? You know, what, what's this all about? Um, at times I think, you know what, don't, don't stress over having to wrap your head around everything. If you just use, say, coriander, it'll go in there and clean out everything. Because sometimes it could be just a whole conglomerate of everything and it's, you just can't make it out. And so just allow it to clean it out for you. Sort of like saying, help, help, you know, and, um, you know, the, this nice guy will come in and just clean things out and you don't have to know everything and just allow it to work for you and of course it's sometimes it's generational stuff too so we don't know what's happened to our ancestors um, most of the time so that recently i had a lady um, that i was talking to 
And uh, I asked her, because she was talking about, oh, you know, my in-laws this and my in-laws that and my sister-in-law this and my parent-in-law this. And, you know, it's like all everyone else's fault. And I listened to this for a while and I said, hey, you know what? Do you like coriander oil? And she said, what? Stink. <laughs> so she does not like it at all. And I thought, hmm. That's why, because she doesn't realize that she can choose to be happy, okay? And she, she lets them, other people, like whatever, whoever them is, um, to affect her and to, you know, make her feel bad. If they, you know, don't respect her, um, she buys into that disrespect and she allows herself to be disrespectful to herself. So, um what we can do is take two drops of coriander internally and smell it and use it for about three months. And you can use the oil um, and with the clues that you get from the emotion book. So if you look at coriander in your emotion book, okay, coriander here, it's the oil of integrity. So one way to expedite that healing, and I promise once you figure out the brain, the mind, your physical body would change too. And I, I see, you know, lots of gut problems in that lady. And, you know, I thought, okay, this helps with the gut, but also it's going to take care of the mind. So it's all interconnected. Um, so, yeah, it says here, you know, self-betrayal uh, controlled by others, which means we allow ourselves to be controlled by others, conforming. And here, the positive, it says, be true to yourself and it's in the guidance and integrity. So, you know, you can, as you use the coriander, you help it along by saying new mental scripts. We have habits, you know, we have habits that we fall into. When we see somebody that has hurt us in the past, we will automatically think negative thoughts about them. And it's like, let's stop it now. Let's break the chains. And that happens um, generationally too. So you can say, I love and understand me. Okay. I love my weirdness. It's okay for me to be different. Okay. Cause this lady, she was complaining about, Oh, people don't understand me. They think I'm weird. They don't like me. And that's okay. I mean, if you don't need everybody to like you, you can just like yourself and that's enough. And you will feel that, um, after a while, coriander will help uh, assist it. So that it doesn't become a very difficult process because, um, you know, the next thing she said, well, well, you know, <laughs> It's easier said than done. I'm thinking, well, it's possible though. You're never given any trial beyond your ability to change. Okay, so it's possible. So what it does is it really helps you face who you are and allow you to honor yourself. This is who I am. And sometimes you don't know who you are <laughs> and that's okay. Now I've got some women coming to me and go, my husband doesn't understand me. And I said, okay, but do you understand yourself? And, oh, no, it's okay. Well, then let's work on that, okay? <laughs> so this way we can really um, learn to love us. And when we learn to love ourselves, others will know exactly how to love us. Okay, we give permission to other people to love us. Okay, so this is an awesome blend. So let's, let's pause here and just get some comments and questions. So anybody, what do you think about coriander and... Uh, its ability to help you be okay with who you are. I think I shouldn't let it sit long enough to get dust on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes we use other oils and it's, it's doing great, but coriander is another guy that goes in a different pathway. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Alrighty. And really? Back to the body part, sorry, um, when you said that it, it affects the larynx and helps you get more air into your lungs, I was like, I need that before I sing. So yep. that's Yeah, but can you see that it's linked to you being honoring, honoring yourself, saying, I have gifts and skills that I can share and it's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I can sound the way I sound. <laughs> right, and that's mm -hmm. good. Good and okay. <laughs> yeah, and it's going to be okay because everyone's voice is going to be different, but mine will add to it and it's going to have its own special flair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. 
Yeah, and it's really cool that we have something like this because I, I've discovered, you know, we have bergamot, we have other oils that do similar but not the same. And imagine, you know, adding them together. It's going to be so powerful. Alrighty, so have you ever had an experience where somebody confronts you and just go rah, 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 and it's, and it's just sort of like a big slap in the face or it just takes you back and it gives you a bit of a shock? And the shock waves, you know, last for a couple of days sometimes because <laughs> they've been so nasty or whatever it is. It's just a big confrontation and it's a bit of a trauma. So this is so exciting. I'm, you know, I was thinking, oh, smell lavender. But here, this is wonderful blend that Dr. Susan Lawton shared. And I felt like, you know, when I smelt it, I thought, oh, okay, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. I know a few people that I can share this oil with. Okay. So it's three drops of coriander, two drops of patchouli, okay, two drops of white fur, and two drops of sandwood. And if you just mix it together in your hands and just cup it over your nose and just inhale. Just keep on smelling it until you feel calm. Because what happens is sometimes when something shocks you, someone's rude to you, or someone's just, just absolutely didn't care and they were just mean and it hurt you for some reason, there's something inside of you that was triggered. You know, I feel like half of the responsibility is yours too because there's some false belief that's inside that is triggered that you have to kind of deal with. And if you identify it, you can release it and um, resolve it, okay, before it becomes set in, in your body and it causes a lot of physical problems. Yeah, so just I made this blend earlier this morning and I felt it just amazing. It's just so gentle. But can you see Coriander says to you, you're okay. You can be yourself. You don't have to please that person. Okay. And Patchouli says, you can have joy, connect your mind and connect your body. Your body's telling you, you know, it's information. A lot of people, they stay up here in their head and they think things through. And the body's giving them lots of information that they're not receiving. Okay. So here, Patchouli assists you from, to say, look, this is who you are. Be happy with this. White fur helps with the generational cleansing. So you don't have to carry all this generational burden. And Sandalwood says, connect back to God, okay? And feel that energy and strength from him. Because you're okay. You're a special individual soul. Don't have to be like everybody else. It's nice, isn't it? So any co comments or questions about this blend? Got people you want to share this with? <laughs> You know, it's really cool. I feel like there's some people, well, when they talk to you, they will bring up the same event that has happened to them years and years and years ago. Mm. You, can still feel that anger. you still feel that resentment of some sort because it's just been like a huge trauma for them, even if it's a small event, um, but they keep on holding it in. So I feel like this is one of those things that really will help them resolve it. And if, if this happens to us, um, we can actually clear it quickly so that we don't hold it in forever. Mm. All righty. Can I put okay. it on my hands and make them smell it? Smells so good. Hello, hello. <laughs> 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 yeah. Sometimes it's hard, isn't it? You just think, gosh, you've told me that story 10 times. Mm -hmm. You know, let, let that go already. You'll be happier if you just let that go. Yeah. And there's things in us too, if there's a certain trauma that we haven't resolved, because we can actually take our traumas and change it to something that we could, um, you know, it could be a positive thing. I tell people all the time, you know, my refugee experience, I'm very grateful for it because it taught me that God lives and loves me and has delivered me in a powerful way. So I wouldn't change that, you know. And so lots of things that we can do to resolve any of the negative. We allow that refining fire to change us 
But if we hold on to it, it's sort of like, I'm just going to let myself burn here. <laughs> yeah, and it just hurts. So I keep burning instead of really using it to, to do a good job and then move on. Okay. All right. So the next thing, spiritually, and I guess this is why it's called the happy oil, right? Get rid of the old nasty junk <laughs> and be happy. So this here is be true to yourself. Be true to yourself. This is an amazing oil for that. Um, to smell it and allow yourself to be okay, to be different. Um, and sometimes when you get to a point where, you know, you don't have, some people are contrary and defiant and they're still unhappy with themselves. They are contrary and defiant because they just want to feel like they have power. They have the power to choose. So I was talking to a lady, she was crying and she said, you know what, my mom, she wants me to do this and this and this and I want to just do the complete opposite. And I know it's wrong, but I just want to do it anyways. And I think, why are you hurting yourself and your mom at the same time, right? Because she doesn't want to be compliant and, and you know, um, conforming. But at the same time, she's gone the opposite direction and she's, not, she's betraying herself too. But sometimes if you know exactly why you're doing it and exactly who you are, even if it looks like you are conforming, you've already, you've chosen that, you know, that uh, action and it's not really conforming. You've, you've consciously chosen. So it's okay. Okay. And it, you can see that in people. They're just confident and they can be themselves. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm thinking I'm just going around in circles a little bit, but it makes sense in my head. <laughs> okay, so what we can do is, you know, healing ourselves spiritually, we can spend some time recognizing our true value as a child of God. Okay, and I like journaling. I like writing a gratitude journal, writing down all the things that is happening to you, is, you know, the people around you, everything that you have, just be grateful for it and see... See how special and unique you are. All right. And again, identifying what it is that you like, what it is that you don't like. All right. And um, some of us here on the call have started our own website. And it's, it's a, an, I think, um, an exercise of discovering ourselves, being okay with who we are and accepting that this is, this is my interests and this is my likes and these are my gifts and these are my talents. It's okay. I don't have to do the best and compare it to everybody else. I don't need to compare anything. I just want to share who I am. And it's liberating. It's very, very liberating. Um, I'll, sh I'll share with you. Um, Rob Young, one of the doTERRA owners this week, he put down, <laughs> I'll share with you that picture later. Um, he put down um, on the slide three things that is most important to him. And that's, you know, him being a father and him being a husband and, you know, him being, um, of course, a child of God, but then uh, the owner of the Terra and just a steward of um, pure essential oils. Okay. And he said that's, that's his focus and that's what he likes to do. And um, he said he doesn't have time to worry about what other people think. Mm -hmm. All of their fears and all their inhibitions, you know, why are you doing this at this particular time? You know, you've got enough money. Why you continue to, to put so much pressure on yourself? It's their opinion. It's their ideas. All right. But what he has is just this wonderful purpose. And he says that he doesn't have time to think, to, you know, think about what other people think. And I really like that. Okay. And I think that confidence that uh, we can get um, comes from this. So when people say, I don't know if I have confidence, what they're saying is I'm scared about what people think of me and I'm on stage and I mess up. You know what? If you think you're okay and you mess up and you feel okay with yourself, then you, you know, you stop worrying and you actually perform much better. Okay. So all those people that hold themselves back because they worry about what other people think, coriander, coriander. That's an, it's just wonderful to know that the coriander can do this. Okay. So have a look at this picture here. <laughs> Okay, look at the girl on the right. <laughs> Everyone else is doing the same thing and she's like, whoop, upside down. <laughs> so this is a wonderful um, picture that I felt like 
represents what we want to, the message we want to share with people about coriander. The coriander says, always be true to yourself. Just love and accept your uniqueness. Okay, that's how you roll. That's okay. All right. So that's a wonderful thing. I love that. So we all have this inner compass inside that's going to guide us. And any time that we feel uncomfortable, we feel something's wrong. You know, and it's just not right. Okay. We need to identify whatever that fear is. Okay. And it could be the discomfort of just following without, um, you know, really allowing yourself to be yourself. So just, you know, pleasing other people, but not really pleasing yourself. So anyway, it's, this is the oil of integrity and you can all discover, you know, what you are, who you are yeah. and, and then really dig into that. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, the bergamot and cassia and clary sage are the oil. <coughs> other oh, bless you. Thank you. That I will add with uh, coriander if you want a boost. So you can use uh, coriander in your necklace diffuser and um, add bergamot to it, or cassia or clary sage. Those are the oils that are very similar in the in the way that um, they help you honor yourself and. Um, love yourself and have more self-assurance and always um, I would assist my brains because we we have a power in words and thoughts so I would assist my brain in changing in that way by saying I love being me I love who I am I love every part of me you can stare at yourself in the mirror and look at yourself in the eyes and and keep doing that if you have a hard time doing that if you have a hard time looking at yourself in the mirror looking at your eyes, you know, into your eyes and telling yourself that you love you, okay, then this is something that we can really work on. Okay, and so you can look in your, the mirror and just go, I really do love me, okay? And that, that means that you've made it. Okay, we all have room for improvement, I feel there. Alrighty, so I, I like this quote here. Um, it's integrity, the mother of many virtues. The dictionary defines integrity as a firm adherence to a code of moral values. But it connotes soundness and incorruptibility. It is a mother of many virtues. It begins when we deal justly with ourselves so, and then we can deal justly with others. So I like that because it's sort of, you know, are you really true to yourself? Can you, can you live with yourself? <laughs> And so if we have a hard time, then coriander will help us figure that out. And I like Job here. Till I die, I will only, I will not remove my integrity from me. Isn't that cool? It's so powerful. Yes, Jade. Yes. It's peaches. Um, I just would like to say this is interesting because I went for a walk today and it was a beautiful day in New York. You know, we've been having some crazy weather. But as I was walking, these thoughts, you know, came to my mind, like, I want to be, like, totally in love with me. I want to be accepting of who I am. And then I'm listening to you. And I don't know why that, I, that thought came across, but I feel like too many of us, we don't take time, you know, to look at ourselves and give ourselves positive affirmation. We just take what's thrown at us or accept what other people say. But I really think it's important that we minister to ourselves. And if using coriander will help me do that, so help me God, I will have to order that this week. And I also wanted to ask, what happened to the, the bergamot? They're, they're out. You, I saw something. I was trying to uh, order that, and I seen that they were out for some time. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't see that. I don't know. You know what, Peaches? My yeah. family and I, we buy, like, multiples of nearly every oil. <laughs> well, oh. very because sometimes you don't know when you need, you're needing something, and you just want to have mm -hmm. a backup. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, awesome. Yes. No, we, we, I absolutely agree with you. And you know what? Um, when we're trained in school, and this is why um, I feel like I can do more. Um, I, I'm a, I, I was really enjoying my career as a school teacher, but I feel like I can do more with this. Um, mm -hmm. Because at school and at home, we're taught to um, punish ourselves when we do something wrong. 
right? And then, <laughs> and, and I don't like some of the things that, you know, you move pegs up and move pegs down to measure your worth and your value and where you're at. I, I am really, uh, you know, not sure about those things because children under the age of nine, they don't distinguish between your good or your bad and your behavior is bad. So if you've done something naughty, it doesn't make you a bad person. But they don't differentiate that. They suddenly and instantly um, conclude that they are the bad person. Oh, that boy's bad. I'm bad. The teacher said I'm bad. You know, and so we have this habit of punishing ourselves, even mentally. Oh, so dumb. Why did I do that? You know, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's like, well, who would want to listen to me? Or, you know, any of those negative things. And that's what you're saying. Why do we, you know, why don't we take care of ourselves and love ourselves too much? Um, and the other thing is we're, we're told to be careful not to have pride. And pride is actually edging God out and, you know, running our own show. That's what pride mm -hmm. is. But when you're connected to God, you love mm -hmm. yourself the way God would love you. So if you have a child, you know, if you have children and you look at them and they continually punish themselves, it actually hurts you too. You're thinking, why? Stop. I love you. Why are you hurting yourself? I really no. would not have that. No. No. If that child just knows how to take care of himself, herself, and say, I can do this. I can do this. You just be so happy. You say, yes, yes, you can. Of course you can do it. <laughs> and so you can say that to yourself. You know, if God's looking down on you and saying, come on, peaches. You go, oh, I'm just this. Oh, I'm not that. Oh, no, honey, you're not. Just, just keep going. Right? And so yeah. if you say, okay, I can, I can, I can. How happy would God be, right, <laughs> with you? Yeah. Right, and yeah. your your friends, you allow your friends to love you too. Okay, I've, uh -huh. I've noticed a lot of people, if, especially women, I think, um, we we say, oh, I'm so ugly because of this reason, because of that reason, I'm so dumb because of all these things, and you just find all these reasons why you should be low, instead of saying, well, I'm going to keep trying. Oh well, you know, I just made a boo boo. I'm not going to punish myself for it because I'm not fearful that I'm going to repeat it. Because uh -huh. obviously, I just learned that it didn't work. <laughs> Right? That's enough. Yeah. That's enough. That's punishment enough. Like, oh, that failed. Yeah. Okay. Instead of you know, going out of your way and finding a reason to beat yourself up a little bit more, wait, yeah. waste your, your breath of life, wasting time and, that you've been given. Yeah. I also, I also feel too, like in our society, when you grow up, you're, you're taught to respect others, respect God, respect, but they, you know, they don't expound on respecting yourself, having respect and self-love. You know, some people look at it as negative, like you're going to be self-absorbed if you, you know, compliment yourself. I mean, you don't have to go around bragging. That's not exactly what I'm talking about, but being acceptant of who you are are being acceptant of your difference. We're always taught to accept others, accept, you know, just other things other than ourselves. It's not really, you know, pushed to accept who you are, love who you are, you know, and love yourself as God loves yourself. I mean, you can go to church and hear that message, but you're not really hearing it in, on your job or out in the streets as much. But I think that's also a cue too from a kid. You're taught respect your teacher, respect this person, respect elders, respect, but you don't hear respect yourself, love yourself, accept who you are, get to know who you really are. Because I find that I meet a lot of people, they don't know who they are and they're pretending or they are taking on, uh, say, a mask of someone else who's trying to be someone else and, and, and then people get lost in the shuffle even as adults adults and it amazes me yeah. and i've been you know toiling with this idea like i want to be who i am i i don't want to conform to other people and their thoughts and opinions about things i want to stand on my own you know belief systems you know my own not belief system but my own belief what i was taught and what i feel is right and best for me and respect myself and those boundaries and things so I'm really glad that you are you know really teaching about the, the uh, emotional you know sides of these essential oils because these are things that I need to um, really you know really need to influence me my life and my career and who I am as a person so I, I just wanted to say that and I'll leave that alone <laughs> you can have it <laughs> exactly I agree with you um, our physical problems will force us to look at um, solutions 
and whether we like it or not, uh, we're always kind of nudged and guided to the direction of healing. And so, you know, mm-hmm. you can use coriander just to focus on your physical healing because you've got this gut problem and you don't like it. And that's fine. But slowly, this coriander can do other things too, you know, behind the scenes. And you may not right. notice, but you will change that way too. So if you've got friends and family that you think, oh, that person just so does not honor himself or herself, you can say, mm-hmm. hey, try coriander for your tummy problems. And then slowly, it will do the other job too. It will help them mm-hmm. find that love for themselves and they never notice that. You can see that, I can see that in people all the time. But you can say, hoo hoo hoo, subtle. But, you know, it's really helping you be yourself. And it's really wonderful. Um, if we are able to just identify who we are, we can write it down and say, oh, this is me, I like this. And then this is mm-hmm. me, and this is my passion. We'll be able to see who we really are. But when we rush, 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 we don't give ourselves time to say, you know, what do I like? What do I, you know, who am I? So it's, you know, some people I've met, you know, some really amazing people, they've written down their, their life decree, things that they feel like, no, I'm going to stick by these because these are things that I like to, to remember to do. And this is who I want to identify um, as me. Okay. So that's, that's integrity. So we, we allow ourselves to um, be ourselves. Okay. But we need to stick by who we are. And then the fruits of that will show by, you know, the fruits will be our confidence and our good health, and our happiness. That's why this oil is the oil of happiness for some of these people. Uh, so you can see here, integrity is the value we set on ourselves it is a fulfillment of the duty we owe ourselves. An honorable man or woman will personally commit to live up to a certain self-imposed expectation. So there's a healthy expectation. I'm not going to be mean to myself anymore. I'm just going to, you know, expect myself to do well, but not you know, beat myself up when I'm not, you know. Um, and they need no outside check to, or control. They are honorable in their inner core. Okay, I like that because it reminds you just to be you. The inside, as long as I'm happy with me, I'm not going to be worried about what other people think. I don't, I'm not going to buy into their labels. Um, their inhibitions, whatever it is they want to stick on me, it's not going to stick. It's just going to fall, fall right off. Okay? No, no, no need for extra praises, no need for, you know, anything. So that's, that's really good. But it's a, it's a balancing act constantly, isn't it? We don't want to go all the way to the other side where we rely on ourselves and just be prideful, but we don't want to be all the way self-abuse and continue to beat ourselves up. So this is a wonderful oil. And all the oils balance us up. And it balances up... Um, in a physical way and mentally and spiritually. So it's just, I'm so grateful for it. You know, guys, this is it for coriander. Anyone else want to, yeah, we have a handout here. Anyone want to comment to question? Yep. Sorry, Jade. I just had a thought about that. You know, how, you know, we can't, we, we need to not expect the praise and the accolades from other people, but when we do receive those, I think we need to do so with, gratitude and graciousness and yes. so and that ties into you know not having pride with our self-love because we're tied to god and when we yeah when we accept that praise with gratefulness and are gracious about it that reflects to god that those are talents that he's given me and i i recognize your um praise for that and i give it to god and you know, Amen. It's not mine yeah. Yeah, but, you know, because I mean, it, it's nice when people uh, recognize your talents, but you need to also recognize that those talents are a gift from God. That's and, right. And then then it's done in the correct way and not prideful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. And then you don't have to worry that you're going to be prideful because sometimes people say, no, 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 I'm not. I'm bad, I'm bad. Because they're so scared that they'll be prideful. Right. Of, like, I'm not that's scared. Not- that's not showing any gratitude to God for those talents or those gifts that he's given you. That's like saying, I don't want that. You know, you've given it to me, but I don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. That's a really good point. I love it. That's, yeah. And people Thank you. Healing. When people start healing, they come to me, they thank me. And I'm like, I didn't do any of that. Just the messenger. That's God's oils. Thank him. You know, turn around and give that <laughs> praise and grace to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That the glory goes to him. That's awesome. Yeah, because that means we're all connected. When we all connect to God, we all connect with each other, and it's God, peace, 
<laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, we'll end our call here, I think, Finn. And I'll have to correct that um, handout because I put menstrual cramp twice. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll change it. I'll add the other thing that I put on there. Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody, for Thank coming. You, um, I'm Thank going to go ahead and, and stop our call. But does anybody have anything they want to add before we go ahead and, and turn this off? <laughs> Debbie, is there anything that you wanted to say about Corey? Um, just let me. Jay, that was amazing. I learned stuff tonight that I did, was not aware of. And oh. I will say that I actually went and took a couple of drops of coriander under my tongue. <laughs> talking because of my day's experience. I had used digestin just about 20 minutes before, and it was not taking care of the problem. And the coriander, my gut doesn't hurt, hurt anymore. So oh, interesting. You. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. The coriander makes the digestive zen work better. Mm -hmm. Just so everyone knows. It's all already in digestive zen. For some reason, just a couple of extra drops makes it work faster. If you're as impatient as me, you would appreciate it. <laughs> Sometimes using different tools is also helpful. Yeah. Variety. Okay. Yep. All of us here are going to have coriander in their pocket, <laughs> right? <laughs> all right. I ordered mine. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for attending. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording here.